Hi everybody, welcome to the workshop. My name's Mark. Uh, right, lathe review time. So I've had this lathe now for just over a year and I thought it'd be good to give everyone my thoughts on it, let you have a look at it in depth and um, we'll go over it from one end to the other, top to bottom and see if I think it's uh, worth the money I paid for it. Right, so We'll start at the headstock end and we'll move on from there. See you in a bit. Okay, so what are we looking at? Well this is the Axminster AT508WL. It's a 2.2 kilowatt or 3 horsepower lathe with full variable speed. It's got an inverter down the bottom here and the motor drives the belts which turns the spindle. The spindle is an M33 by 3.5 thread. It also has a handle on the back for turning the hand spindle. And it has a spindle lock here on the front. Access to the belts is through this door for easy changing of the belts. And it has three belt positions. A low, a medium and a high. It's very easy to change the belts and I'll go over that in a minute two levers. The lathe itself is actually very quiet. I'll start it up for you now. That's full speed on the middle belt. That's 2332 RPM. One of the things I do like about this it's got a slow ramp up. So when you start it, it starts off slow and builds up to speed. It doesn't go straight to the top speed. Like that. It starts off slow and then builds up. Another good function of this headstock is it swivels through 360 degrees in 45 degree increments. All you need to do, undo the handle Pull out the locking lever and you can hear a click positively into the next 45 degree. Pull the handle again, there's another 45 and there's another 45. This will also mean that the headstock can move independently all the way along the Ways, so you can slide it from one end all the way to the other. Changing the belts on this lathe is very simple. It's got three positions. The belt is accessed by this door, held in place with an Allen screw. Undo the door and you can see here that's the main uh, 10 groove feed belt. Now all you need to do is Undo the locking lever, pull the handle towards you, slip the belt off of one pulley and onto the other. Give it a little bit of tension. Do the locking lever up again and there we now have the lathe on full speed. 3,752 RPM. Now that'll give you the highest speed ratio, which is ideal for doing spindle work. But if you're doing big items, big heavy bowl blanks, all you need to do Move the belt onto the first pulley. Make sure the belt's seated in the grooves. There you go. Give it some tension. Lock it off. Just close the door. Now that's on its lowest pulley. Maximum torque. 
full speed 1309 RPM. I'll be honest, I very rarely use any other belts than the middle one. That gives me That gives me my greatest speed range with a good combination of power go okay, just let the belt seat itself bit of tension lock it back up and then all you do is do that screw back up with an Allen key. And it's back running on the middle belt. Two thousand three hundred reps. Now also on the headstock we have an indexing system. Now I'll be honest, I find this indexing system a bit fiddly to use. It doesn't feel like it locates properly. It's Yeah, I still haven't figured this indexing system out. There it is, located and locked in. Undo it. There's the next one. There's the next one. I think it, I just think it's not quite as positive as it could be, but it does have an indexing system. Whenever you're using an indexing system on a lathe make sure you switch the lathe off. Don't run an indexing system with your lathe powered on. You could shear the pins quite easily if you accidentally turn the lathe on. Also, you can see here, there's a very handy ruler attached to the headstock. So that's pretty much everything on the headstock. The bedways are polished, very smooth, very, very strong. Love these. Easy to keep clean. Just a bit of machine wax. Braced at regular intervals on the cast iron body. The banjo has a unidirectional handle, so the locking position either to the right or to the left, depending on what work you're doing. Fully motorboard, in and out. Slides really well. And we'll take 30mm tool posts for the tool rests with a locking handle that you can position wherever you want. The tailstock has both a manual and a digital micrometer in both millimeter and inches. Zero the, the uh, digital readout and as you wind out the quill count it counts off either in inches or in millimeters, how far you've wound out. Very handy for when you're drilling down to a specific depth. Now, one of the things that myself and quite a few other people don't like about this lathe, this handle. On the 406, which is the smaller model of this, the two horsepower, the handle to lock the tailstock is positioned here on the side. 
So you lock it into place, knock it back, slide, lock it back in, and it's a really well positioned handle. This one is in the way of this wheel. Falls back down, so you move it up here to go and move the tailstock out of the way. You turn around, pick something up, come to move the tailstock, and it's locked back in position. It's, it's a pain. Axminster, if you're listening, put this over here, please. Tailstock moves nice and freely on the bed race. Locks down positively, I'll give them that, but that handle is in the wrong place. And just so you can see, the quill will extend a full six and a half inches from the tailstock. Another nice feature with this lathe is the magnetic backed movable control box. This control box has start, stop, forward and reverse and your variable speed dial. And you can position it wherever you want depending on the work you're doing. It'll go anywhere you want it to, as long as it's stick to the metal. Very handy. It's nice if you want it this end or this end. I've held the cable up underneath here with a rubber band because I like it to be there. Without holding it up onto the um, bedway braces, the cable trails on the floor. Just makes it easier to sweep up and hoover up if the cable is held up underneath the bedways. But it's very handy to be able to have this positioned wherever you want. So you've got your start, your stop, change direction, start, stop, change direction, and you've got your variable speed. Take it right down to 60 RPM and right the way up to full speed, depending on what belt you're on. Now underneath the lathe, you can see there, there's the inverter. Now this inverter is, in, is bolted in position underneath on the back side of the legs. But you can take this off and position it somewhere else. Got a long cable. You could have that bolted to the wall, um, onto a board, anywhere else. It doesn't have to be underneath the lathe. As you can see, the feet that come with the lathe are fully adjustable, so you can wind them in and out to get them to the right height for the floor that the lathe is going to sit on. And also here, you can see that cast within the legs are two positions for you to be able to put boards on to create a shelf. Now this lathe comes with the bed extension. So the bed extension will bolt onto the end of the lathe here. It will also bolt onto the middle of the lathe here and it will bolt onto the other end of the lathe there and it will also bolt into three different height levels there that end and that end as well. It's nice having that extension, it gives you a lot of uh, scope, variety for different sizes of pieces, plus with the headstock that moves backwards and forwards and swivels you can turn larger pieces you've got a 20 inch swing above the bedways as it is but you can increase that by having the extension on the middle plate here or on the end okay so what do you get with the lathe you get two tool rests a long and a short that's a 12 inch and a 6 inch you get a spanner 
for removing the faceplate. You get a faceplate, you get a combination live centre, and you get a four prong drive centre, as well as the knockout bar. Okay, so I'm going to give you some statistics now for the lathe. It goes from 60 to 3,700 RPM over the three belt positions. It's 762 millimeters to 1,262 millimeters over the bedways with the extension. It's 508 millimeters or 20 inches over the bed swing or 900 millimeter with the extension on the end positions. It weighs 280 kilos. It's 2.2 kilowatt or 3 horsepower with an M33 by 3.5 inch spindle thread, 30 millimeter tool posts, and it runs off a 230 volt standard plug. Right, that's pretty much it. That's the lathe, top to bottom, back to front, side to side. Um, what are my thoughts? Right. It's a heavy lathe, it's very solid, it's versatile, it's dependable, it's well built. The indexing system on it is a bit fiddly. Now, to be fair, I haven't used the indexing system very much since I've had the lathe. But, I have heard other people who've had this lathe and its predecessor for longer than I've had it, and they've said the same. They do think it's a bit fiddly. Um, something to consider if you do a lot of indexing work. Uh, it's easy to use. Uh, it's a very, very pleasant lathe to use. It's also very easy to assemble, but it's incredibly heavy, and it does take two of you to put this thing together. It's not easy to assemble. In fact, I'd say it's almost impossible to assemble on your own unless you've got a hoist or an engine um, crane. Two of you are needed. And when the lathe comes, it's beautifully packaged. Usually arrives on a double pallet, completely boxed, uh, covered in a nice film of machine oil, which needs to be cleaned off before you use. Everything goes together well. All the threads are smooth. Everything's included to put it together. Um, it's incredibly quiet. It's enormously powerful. I haven't stalled this lathe yet. I've had it on its lowest belt and had a massive uh, 26 inch blank, six inches deep on here. And I was taking half inch cuts. Never even slowed it down. Never slowed it down. I have got a uh, hollowing uh, bowl saving system on the way, uh, so I'd be interested to see how that copes with it, but I, I have no doubts, no doubts whatsoever that this is going to handle it, no problem. In conclusion, right, should you buy this lathe, should you consider this lathe, or should you avoid this lathe? In my opinion, and this is only my opinion, Depending on your needs, I would say definitely buy this lathe. It's everything and more that I wanted. There's no way I think will I ever reach its capacities. It'll always be more lathe than I'm capable of with my skill and my abilities. Um, there are bigger lathes out there, but they're also more expensive. For the price, which I believe was £3,499.98 at the time that I'm filming this. I think it's good value for money. Um, it'll last you for years and years. It'll give you trouble-free use. If you do happen to have any problems, Axminster's customer service has no problems. They're renowned for being excellent. They will look after you. They will sort you out. And overall, I think it's a very good piece of equipment. A couple of small niggles. The handle on the tailstock, that needs to be in a better place. It really does. Um, having it on the end there, it's a pain. It is a pain. You do get used to it, 
But every time you use it, you can't help wishing wish it was on the side, like the 406. Um, the indexing, it's a bit fiddly, it could be a little bit more positive. I'm sure there's a better system for it. But again, that might be me. I'm a bit of an idiot, we all know that. Um, but it's got so many nice features, this lathe, that they far outweigh the two. And it really is only two niggles that this thing has. Um, movable control box, an extension that comes with it free, two tool rests, a really nice live center. Uh, does anybody use four prongs anymore? I don't. I use step centers or crown drives, but it's nice that they throw it in. Ah, the other thing that does come with it is the alignment tool. I forgot that. So when you've swiveled the headstock, you put that in, end in the spindle, that end in the tailstock, undo the headstock end, lock down the, the tailstock end, wind them out, and it'll align the spindles for your kiss test. So it's bang on. That comes with the lathe. But always remember to do that after you've swiveled your headstock, because they may not be exactly lined up. You will notice that if you're uh, driving a piece between centers, especially if you're doing pens or intricate and uh, precise detailed work. But that comes with a lathe, so that's good. Um, hard wearing, yeah, I would definitely recommend the lathe. Now as a, a final caveat, I want to say a couple of things. This video is not sponsored. I've bought this lathe with my own money. Um, Axminster haven't asked me to do this. I've done it all on my own opinion. Uh, the thoughts and conclusions of this video are mine and mine alone. It's up to you if you want to spend this kind of money on a lathe. It is a big investment. Um, I bought this lathe to invest in myself and hopefully my future business. And I can see this lathe seeing me out for many, many, many years to come. I would have no problem buying another one. If I was to set up a school, I would probably buy two or three, either 406s or the 508s to have for the students in the school. Um, that's the kind of confidence that I have in this equipment and the confidence that I have in its abilities and its quality and its condition. So if you're looking for a new lathe, the AT508WL from Axminster Power Tools. Give it a, cons a serious consideration. Sorry I'm stumbling through my words, but I don't do these videos very often because I don't like the sound of my voice. You guys all know that. So I hope that's helped. Um, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you don't like the video, give it a thumbs down. Uh, but if you do give it a thumbs down, why not tell me why you didn't like it? And then I can try and change what I do in future to make everybody happy. If you're not already a subscriber to the channel, consider subscribing. And if you are a subscriber, if you could press the notification bell so that every time I put a video out, you get notified, that really helps the channel to grow. And it's free, it doesn't cost you anything. So that's me signing off for now. I hope you've enjoyed this, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.